Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today we're gonna optimize RAF. It's officially released now. So we're gonna start to optimize your Windows parameter. And after that, we will go in the in-game settings. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're gonna search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for example, here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32, just divided by two. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game. So the first parameter is the full screen mode. I recommend to go with exclusive. Uh, it's the best for your FPS and stability, but also if you want to use technology like uh, Radi Radeon Super Resolution, you will need to use the exclusive one. So super important to use that. 
For the resolution, I recommend to go with your native resolution from your monitor and also look at the amount of Earths. By default, mine was at 60 and you don't want to run 60 when you have 170 Earths on your monitor. So super important to match your amount of Earths and your resolution. And also, if you want to use the super resolution from Radeon, you will need to lower your resolution over there and the driver will upscale it back to gain some FPS. For the overall quality, I recommend to go with fastest. This is like the best way to get the most of FPS, but we're going to change other graphic parameter uh, to improve a little bit the visual quality and still keep some good performance. For the water quality, the first parameter, I recommend to go with fast. It really depends on the, uh, the computer that you are using. For sure, if you're using an Intel uh, CPU with an integrated GPU, you will probably need to go with fastest because you will see a lot of water in this game. And uh, fastest and fast, you will see 2% difference in your FPS. Fast to good, another 3%. But after that, when you go to fantastic and extreme, it, it's like 45% and another 45. So it's taking a lot of resources. Fast is, is a very good compromise for this game. For the texture quality, I recommend Fantastic if you have 4 gig of VRAM and more. If you have 3 gig of VRAM, go with good. 2 gig fast and less than 2 gig, go with fastest. After that, the shadow. You have four different parameters, as you can see, and you can gain a lot of FPS with them. So first of all, shadow type, I recommend to go with none. You will gain a nice 5% boost in your FPS over there. For the quality of the, EF, the FPS, I recommend to go with fastest. So if I compare Fantastic to fastest, you can gain a nice 12% boost over there. For the Shadow Cascade, you have 4, 2, and none. I recommend none. You can gain another 4% here. And also, you have the distance of the shadow. If you put them at 0, you can expect another 7% boost in your FPS. So this one is pretty huge if you want to gain a lot of FPS. After that, you have the real-time reflection. You have a couple of options here. Uh, I really recommend to just deactivate the real-time reflection. It's causing crazy drop in your FPS. So super important to deactivate this. After that, V-Sync. V-Sync really depends on the amount, uh, not the amount, but if you have the G-Sync or FreeSync technology on your monitor, if you have that, you don't want to use FreeSync. Uh, you don't want to use V-Sync, sorry. Uh, if you, have, you don't have those technology and you have a lot of T-Ring, uh, when you're playing the game, for sure use V-Sync. It will add a little bit of input lag in your game, but it's not that bad. You know, you're playing Wrath, you're not playing Valorant or uh, Counter-Strike, so you want a good experience, and V-Sync will help you a lot with that. For the anti-aliasing, normally in games, I always say to remove it. Uh, in this game, it's, it's quite good, uh, and it doesn't take a lot of resources. It's like 2% difference in your FPS, so I recommend to use anti-aliasing to have a good visual quality for this game. Ambient inclusion, this one is a bit tricky. You can expect 5 to 6% boost in your FPS if you deactivate it, but your game will look very flat. So it really depends on where you are right now in your um in your build. Like uh, do you still struggle with your FPS? If you you don't struggle, just activate your ambient inclusion because it will help a lot for your visual quality. So depending on the type of computer that you're using, activate or deactivate. For the frame rate limit, uh, I'm using no limit because I already limit all my game with Radiant software at 167 because I still want to be in my free sync range. Uh, my maximum range is 170. Um, so it really depends what you want to do. If you have a 60 Hz monitor and you're playing on the laptop, don't go no limit. You will just create more heat in your computer and after that you will have like stuttering because your thermal will be too high on your CPU and GPU and you, they will start to throttling. So don't go too crazy with that. Just limit your FPS depending on the type of computer that you are using. The last one is the FOV. For the FOV, uh, I really want to say that because a lot of people doesn't think about it. Um, it will impact your FPS. So if you go max FOV, you will render a, more stuff in front of you. So you will lose FPS. If you're playing on like an old rig with an integrated GPU, don't go too crazy. Go with 50, start with that, do some testing. Uh, if you're uh, playing, I don't know, with a 1060, something like that, you can definitely go at 70 in this game without any issue. So be aware that FOV will impact your FPS. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my RAF uh, guide, optimization guide. If you have any question, just come in in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.